can you hear me? Yeah? No? Yes? Great. Great. So I'm going to live code Space Invaders from scratch, no libraries. Um, and the reason I want to do this talk is because when I made my first game, maybe two or three years ago, um, I thought that graphics and sound and uh, collision detection and things like that would be really, really hard. And so I used a framework for my game to do all those things for me. Um, and then a, a while later, I wrote uh, another game from scratch and discover that those things like you know graphics and sound and collision detection and keyboard input and stuff they're all actually pretty okay in fact they're much easier than making a game I think um, so that's why I'm going to do this talk now um, I'm going to live code it when I type a line of code in front of anyone just one other person then I usually make like one error or something and then that number of errors goes up kind of linearly with the number of people watching so Probably I'll make about 300 errors per line. Um, now I've got about 170 lines to get out, and so that's 300 times 170 errors, which is like, yeah, a, a big number. Um, so please bear with me while I make those errors. Cool. So let's get started. Um, I have a, um, a HTML page here, and I'm just going to add a body tag, um, and I'm going to add a canvas element to that. Give it an ID so that I can grab it from my code, and a width and a height. Um, and I'm going to load my game script straight in. Um, so it's just one file, game.js. Um, and I'll load that. Great. So now I've got a game.js file. Uh, and I'm just going to console log high just to check that things are basically working OK. Now, to serve my game, I'm just running a static server, super simple, um, uh, just that uh, serves the index.html and the game.js. So we can see that we've got high there in the um, browser console. So let's get started with the for reals game. So I'm going to make an immediately invoke function uh, just to namespace everything. I'm going to make a constructor function for the game, which will ho hold all the main game code. And give it a prototype. Um, and then right away, I want to bind an onload callback um, that will instantiate the game once the DOM um, is ready with the canvas and the script all loaded and everything like that. So just new game. And I'm going to pass in the ID of the canvas element that I'd like to draw to. And then I'm going to bind that here. And that's great. So now I want to get the canvas into my game. So to do that, super simple, just use dot document dot get element by ID, pass in the canvas ID. And then I want to get um, a drawing context, which I, I'm going to call screen. And all the drawing context is, is just a bundle of functions that I can use to draw to the canvas. Um, so for that, I just do get context. And there we are. And while I'm here, I'm going to make a game size var um, just to store the width and the height of the canvas for later use for placing my entities. So I'm going to give it an x of um, canvas.width and a y of canvas.height. So let's check that everything's still basically working. So I'm just going to console.log high again. And I've got high, so things seem to be, se seem to be OK. Um, now I'm going to make a tick function. Um, and tick is going to get run about 60 times a second, depending on uh, the, the uh, resources the browser has available. And the tick is going to be responsible for running all of my main game logic. Um, so I'm going to call this update function on the game, and I'm going to call a draw function on the game. And the draw function is going to get the screen, which it draws to, and also the game size. So these functions don't exist yet, so I should get an error, so that's great. Um, so the way this works is I call tick, we call update on the game, and then we call draw. But that is basically the end of the line, even if I do um, define update and draw. So I need to some way to um, keep running tick like 60 times a second. Um, so to do that, I just use a, a nice browser API called request animation frame. So just to prove that this is really only running once, I'm just going to console.log high again. 
and we get high, but only once. So that should be happening loads and loads of times if this were, if this were going on a loop. So to make that happen, I just use request animation frame, and I pass in tick. So the way this will work is we call tick once, we update the game, so that does all the game logic, we draw the game, um, and then we call request animation frame, which says, hey, browser, please run this in the very near future. And it, the browser aims for 60 times a second. So now with my high, I should see a ton of those. So that's great. This is working nicely. So let's stop that running. Now what I want to do is kind of do something interesting. So I'm just going to try and draw to the screen. Um, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. And to do that, super easy, it's just fill rect. And I pass in an X and a Y and a width and a height. And there, I've got a black rectangle on the screen. So that's absolutely fantastic. We've got something on the screen, which is super sweet. Um, so now I'd like to actually kind of start making the game. So I'm going to have a bodies array, which is all of the bodies in my, array, in my game. So that's the player, the invaders, and the bullets. Um, and I'm going to make a new player, passing in the game and the game size for putting the player in the right place. Now, of course, I need to go ahead and make that constructor function. So I'll do that. Um, and that takes the game and the game size. And I'm going to give the player a center, which tells me, which tells the game, sorry, where uh, the player is at the moment. So that's just the, ge the player starts off at game size dot, dot x uh, divided by two, so right in the center of the screen. And then the y is uh, game size dot y minus the size of the player, so a little bit up from the bottom of the screen. Now we don't have a player size yet, so I'll make that, and it's just 15 by 15. Great. And I'm going to save away the game on the player for later use. Um, and I'm going to add a prototype to the player. Um, and the player has their own update function. So the way the game's going to work is we call update and draw on the game 60 times a second. And then that update function delegates to the update function on all of the entities so that they can do their own updating. Um, to update their own state as they need to. So um, let me just check that that's basically going to work and we've got no errors. So remember that we've made a bodies array and we've added the player to it. Um, so that's fine, so no, no big errors. Um, so let's try and draw the player rather than drawing that rectangle. Now normally I delegate to a draw function on the player for this, but because I want to keep things super simple, then the player, the invaders, and the bullets are all going to be drawn as black rectangles. Um, so it's like not super high fidelity, but that's okay. Um, so this is bodies.length, so iterate through all the bodies. Um, and then I'm just going to, oh, yeah, great. I'm gonna just going to call this draw rect function, which doesn't exist yet. Passing in the screen I want to draw to, remember that's the drawing context, and the current bodies. So let me just go and define draw rect. And this is the function, of course, that's going to be used to draw the bullets and the invaders as well. And that'll just happen by magic. Um, and so we take a body, and it's the same thing again, except I just want to use the attributes on the body to decide where I want to draw things. So body.center.x um, minus uh, body.size.x divided by 2, and that's just because the uh, uh, fill rect works from the top left rather than the center. And then the same for the y component. And then the width is just body.size.x and body, and the height is body.size.y. So that's great. Let's see where we are. OK, so I've got the player. That's fantastic. Great. Let's make them move. Uh, so this, I'm going to make a, something called the keyboarder, which is just a little module um, which will uh, handle keyboard input. So it has a key state uh, object. Um, which handle, uh, records whether any key that's ever been pressed is down or up right now. So for that, uh, and to update that state, then I'm going to add a on key down um, a bind to on key down, and that bind bound function will take an event e, and I just update the key state for the e dot key code, and e the key code on the event is the uh, unique number that identifies which key was pressed. So now I'm recording when keys go down. I want to record when keys go up. So this is the same, exactly the same, except I just set the key back to false. Now I want to be able to uh, interrogate this state. So I'm just going to make an isDown function, um, which takes a key code 
and just returns whether uh, that key code is down in the key state, so whether it is equal to true. And then finally on this, I'm just going to make a handy uh, object of key, uh, key code mappings to nice human readable names. So left is 37, right is 39, and uh, space is 32. Um, cool, so now let's, let's use the key border. So we're on the player constructor function again, and I just instantiate the key border and then use it in here. So I'm just going to say if, um, so the keyboard is just capturing all the state for us. We don't no need to interfere with it anymore. So I'm just going to say if uh, keyboard is down, and then pass in the key I care about. So the first key I care about is um, the left key. So if the left key is down, move left. Super simple. And while I'm here, I'm going to do right. And there we are. So let's see where we are. So, uh, no, OK, no movement yet. Fine. <laughs> uh, let's check that's being run. No, it's not. OK. Play it. Oh, yeah, silly old me. Sorry. So I forgot to uh, call update on all of my entities. So easy fix. Great. OK, so we've got high, and we've got some movement too. Now, that's not quite what we were hoping for, though, um, because this kind of smearing effect is like super not ideal. So let's get rid of the high for a start. Um, so that, that's not ideal. So why is this happening? It's, it's, it's just because we're drawing, but we're never clearing away the old drawing. So we do the first drawing, and then we just keep on layering over drawings again and again and again on top. That's a super easy fix. Just in the main draw function uh, for the whole game, then we do uh, screen.clearRect, and we just clear from the top left to the bottom right. And now we've got a nice player movement, and so that's working fantastically. OK, so let's add bullets. Um, so we've already got the key, uh, keyboard of code ready to go, so I can just copy and paste that. So the key I care about now is space for fire. Um, and in this case, I'm going to just make a bullet. And the, I pass to the bullet at the center I'd like, so that's just wherever the player is uh, for the x component. Um, and the y component is uh, wherever the player is on the y axis. But uh, I want to subtract the size, uh, half the size, um, because uh, I want the bullet to spawn just sort of directly above the player um, so that they don't shoot themselves in the face. Um, and then I'm going oh my god, wow, sorry about the wrapping. Um, uh, and then I'm going to add, uh, pass in a velocity to the bullet. And the velocity is just 0, so straight upwards on the x component. And then y is like minus 6, is, is a pretty good number. And then I want to add that bullet to the game. And so I'm not going to reach directly into the game and add it to the body's array. I'm going to let the game do that for me, because it's kind of none of the player's business how the bodies are modeled. Um, so I'm just going to pass in bullet. And to make this work, I just need to add a, sorry for the like scrolling, um, I'm just going to add an add body function to as a method to the game. And that just takes a body and uh, pushes it onto the body's array. OK, great, no errors. Uh, OK, fine, fair enough, fair enough. So we need to define bullet, right? So I'm just going to start off with the player um, to save some typing. So we already know that this takes a center and a velocity. The size is going to be 3 by 3, so much smaller. The center is going to be whatever we said it is. And the no need for keyboard input. And the velocity is going to be whatever we said it is. So that's pretty nice. And then the update code for the bullet is super simple. It's just like take whatever the uh, x component of the uh, uh, center is and add on the x component of the velocity. And then the same for the, whoop, same for the y component. OK, sweet. So can you see those bullets? Yeah, nice. 
Cool. OK, so I mean, we're halfway there, sort of. Um, now let's add an invader. So I'm going to start off again from some boilerplate code, polls. Um, now the invader takes the game and the center where we'd like to place the invader. So the size is the same as the player. The center is whatever we said it is. And there's no keyboard input, of course. And invader is there. Now, the update function for the invader is a little different. So what we want to do with the invaders, they're in the sky. I mean, if you've seen space invaders, the invaders are basically arrayed in, in the top of the screen. Um, and there's going to be 24 of them, so three rows like that, and then eight columns like that. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to make, like, I want them to sort of patrol the skies, right? So it's going to be like, like that to, to the right, and then like back to the left, okay? So in order to keep track of the you know, thing, then, um, I <laughs> uh, then I want to have a, a sort of uh, basically their relative patrol position. So when they're on the far left, then um, uh, patrol X is zero. And when they're on the far right, patrol X is 40. So patrol X will keep track of that for me. And I also want to have a notion of which direction the um, uh, this particular invader is traveling in. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Um, so when they're going right, then in the speed x is positive, and when they're going left, then the speed x is negative. So all I need to do to, to marshal all of that is just keep track of patrol. So I just say if patrol dot x um, is less than zero or patrol x is greater than forty, then we've moved outside the, the bounds of our patrol. So let's just turn back. So speed x is just minus speed x. Just reset it to that. Oh my god. Great. So we just, what if speed x was going right, make it go left. Or if it's going left, make it go right. So that's pretty straightforward. And now we just use speed x to move the uh, invader. So this.center.x plus equals this.speedx. And then the same for patrol, so that we keep an update, keep track of where the, player, the invader is in their patrol. And that should do it for us. So now let's add some invaders. So I'm going to make a create invaders function, um, which just takes the game. And this is going to come up with an array of all the invaders that, that the game starts with. So I'm going to make that array, and I'm going to return that array as the final result. Um, and then the, 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 the work of the uh, create invaders function is just to iterate between i equals 0 and i is, less than, um, I is 23 for 24 invaders. And I just want to create an invader inside here. So I'm going to say, hey, the x component of the center of the invader is 30 in, in from the left. So we start in 30 in from the left um, uh, uh, plus um, i mod 8. And it's mod 8 because we want eight columns of invaders like that. And then multiply whatever that is um, by 30 to space each invader 30 apart. And then the y component of the center of the invader is exactly the same, except it's i mod 3 because we want three rows of them like that. So let's go ahead and create that invader. So I'm going to push it onto the invaders. Oh, yeah. Invaders array. And I'm going to pass in the game and the center, which I'll just make out, out of the x and y that I just made. So that's sweet. Uh, and that should be invaders. So let's try and use create invaders. So at the moment, there's only the player in the bodies array. So I'm going to call create invaders, which we know returns an array, passing in the game. And I'm just going to concat on the player to create the final array of bodies. Okay, so Array of invaders, push uh, concat on the player onto the end. That's our first set of bodies that we start off with. OK, there we are. <laughs> Sweet. OK, so they're patrolling backwards and forwards in a kind of doomy, doomy way. Um, but they're not kind of like, you know, so I can shoot at them, but nothing really happens. So let's fix that. Let's do some collision detection. Um, now, I'm going to make this colliding function, which takes two bodies, body one and body two. Um, and the way this works is that 
I want, there's five conditions which mean if any of them are true, these two bodies are definitely not colliding, right? So there's five different things. If any of them are true, not colliding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see if any of them are true. And then if none of them are true, I know they are colliding. OK, now that sounds kind of abstract, but so let's, get, let's dive into the details. So first condition is if body one is equal to body two in memory, they're the same body, and so they're, they're obviously not colliding. Or possibly in some kind of metaphysical way they are. But like they're definitely not actually colliding. Um, now, uh, then the other four conditions are, and I'm just going to switch over to like artist mode, which I've only just discovered. It's amazing. Thanks, Kevin Liner. Um, so imagine I've got a body here and then a body here, right? If the right of this body is to the left of the left of this body, they're not colliding. Absolutely 100%. It doesn't matter where they are. If that's true, they're definitely not colliding. Likewise, if the... Yeah, if the bottom of this body is above the top of this body, again, definitely not colliding. Now, if I do those four checks on all four sides and they all come back false and they're not the same entity, then they're definitely not colliding. And then if I do the reciprocal of that, then I get whether they are colliding, okay? So now, typing the code for that is a bit of a bore, and you'd probably fall asleep, and I'd probably fall asleep. And so I'm just going to paste it in. I do hope you'll forgive me. But just basically, trust me, that works, right? Okay. <laughs> so now that we've got co the colliding function, then we need to actually, actually, actually kind of do some collisions, right? So what I want to be able to do is I want to be, able to, say, to be able to say the new bodies for this coming tick and the new bodies that we'll move on with is the old bodies minus all the ones that were colliding, OK? So if two bodies collide, they just disappear from the game. There's no explosion. Nothing happens. They just disappear, and we never talk about them ever again, right? So I'm just going to say that the new bodies is the old bodies where, and I'm just going to write the code that I wish I had, where I filtered out the ones that and not colliding with anything. OK, is everyone all right with that kind of um, construction? So this is the code I wish I had. Unfortunately, I don't have it, but I can fix that, right? So I'm just going to write not colliding with anything. So um, uh, yep. grab the bodies array. Uh, uh, that's nonsense. Great. Um, now let's write not colliding with anything. And that takes a body. We'll call it body one. And it's going to be another lovely filter. And I'm going to filter out all the ones and keep all the ones that are colliding. So body one and body two. Body two passed in here, of course. Um, and if the length of that array is 0, then this body one is not colliding with anything. So let's walk through that again. So I pass in body one. That's the body I care about, whether it's collided with anything. I run through all the bodies, and I say, hey, give me all the bodies. Keep all the bodies that are colliding with body one. right? And if the length of that array is 0, then it turns out body one wasn't collided with anything. And so I return true. And so in this case, then it would be kept inside the resulting array that gets passed back to bodies here. So let's see if that works. So let's do some shooting. OK, sweet, sweet. So that works. It's fantastic. Thank Christ. Um, so that's totally working. So it's, it's a bit one-sided at the moment. It seems hardly fair that the poor old invaders aren't doing any shooting. Um, so let's fix that. So I'm going to make that make the invaders do some shooting. And I'm just going to find the invader code. Yeah, great. And I'm just basically going to take the old code that I used for the player and just Go ahead and paste it right in, OK? A few small modifications. Number one, I want the bullet to spawn below the invader, not above the player. So I just changed that uh, uh, minus sign to a plus. Number two, I want to do a bit of random lateral drift, uh, sort of sideways drift. So I'm going to add a bit of randomness to the x component. And then number three, I want the bullet to go down, not up, otherwise, so that they don't shoot themselves. Um, and now I just add the body. Now, what's the condition here? If I were to have um, like no if statement around here, that would be a disaster, right? Because it would just be like a sort of bullet, <laughs> like a sort of apocalyptic rain of bullets on the player, because they'd be shooting every tick, right? Because update runs 60 times a second, right? For e for every invader, so it would just be chaos. So that's hardly fair. So how can I fix that? Well, it's pretty easy. I can just do a random dice roll, okay? 
And so if math.random, which is, uh, produces a number between 0 and 1, comes out greater than 0 0.995, random number that I've just chosen, then go ahead and shoot. Right Now, 0 0.995 is, uh, or above 0 0.995 is not going to come up very often. But um, remember, this update function is being run 60 times a second, so in the average, it happens pretty frequently. Okay, so let's let's see what happens. Okay, great. So they're shooting. I mean, but I mean, there's something wrong, right? <laughs> um, so this this seems hardly fair. Um, so I can just sort of dodge all, all day. And now, now of course, it's going to be kind of strange that, that I don't. I can't think why it's still that top row that is still there. I mean, why could that be? Um, okay, so it's because they're all shooting the people below them, which is just totally unfair, right? So that, th let's fix that. Oh, I died. Right, what a miracle. Um, so let's fix that. Now, um, I'm going to, again, do the thing where I just write the code I wish I had and then write that code. So I'm just going to say, hey, look, dude, if you've got like some invaders below you, just don't shoot, for Christ's sake. Okay, so I'm just going to pass in this, right? So again, do the random dice roll, where, which comes up occasionally. And then if that's, that comes up uh, true, then go ahead and just also check that there's nobody below you. And if that's true, fire away. Great. So I, need, I haven't got invaders below. Where does that live? Now, I'm going to add it to the game because that has a kind of more um, sort of omnipotent view of things. Um, so invaders below, uh, another function, of course. Um, and I take an invader. And I'm going to use filter again, my favorite function. Uh, so I'm going to go through, filter through the bodies. And what I want to do is I want to find all the invaders that are you know, below the invader I passed in, right? And that's directly below. So there's a few conditions for that. Oh, so, so we pass in a B for body. Um, number one, I want to keep this uh, body if uh, I want to keep this body if um, the body is an instance of an invader. Step one. And I'll keep them, if, it, if that's true, and they are somewhere below, right? So that's just going to be uh, b.center.y uh, uh, is greater than invader.center.y. And I also want to keep them, if they're not just sort of like anywhere below, but like kind of directly below in this kind of column directly below them. So I just fix that by saying uh, b.center.x. Uh, so just do the x distance between the two invaders. Um, and if that is less than the width of either of them, I mean, obviously, they're both the same width, so it doesn't really matter which one I choose, then you know it's directly below, right? So those are my three conditions. So keep all the bodies that are invaders are somewhere below and are directly below. Now, that again produces an array that I've filtered out the bodies. If that length is greater than zero, I know there's invaders below, so you know, please, for, for God's sake, don't shoot. OK, so let's see if that fixes things. It looks promising. OK, great, that's fantastic. So the invaders are now kind of working together. Um, so that's great. So this is kind of mostly a game, right? I mean, we're, we're pretty much there, except it's kind of kind of kind of quiet, right? So let's let's fix that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add a sound, just just one actually. Um, oh, I don't know what that is. So uh, I'm gonna make this load sound function, which takes a URL, which is just where the sound lives, and then a callback that we'd like to uh, have run to pass the sound when it's ready ready and loaded. So I'm gonna make a new sound, passing in URL. Um, and I want to say sound.load. But before that, I want to bind to a special event. So I'm going to say sound dot, um, add event listener, And the event I care about is can play through. And that's going to get fired when the sound is ready and fully loaded and ready to play. So what's loaded? Why am I not passing in callback? Well, I'll show you. So I certainly want to pass back that sound, which I'm just going to do here um, with sound. Um, but I also need to unbind the event list that I bound. Otherwise, every time I rewind the sound to, to play it again, then this, this event is going to get fired again. So I'm just going to remove that event listener. So that should do it. So now we just call the callback with the sound, and we're ready to go. So let's, let's put this function to use. Um, so the uh, shooting sound, which is the one I'm going to play, lives at shoot.wav. Um, pass in the callback function. And you can see that the whole start of the game is predicated on the sound being all set and ready to go. Uh, 
And now I just use that shoot sound in my game. So hopefully, uh, did I call it the right thing? Uh, yes, great. Cool, so let me just find the player. And to play the sound, super simple, I just rewind it by calling load. <laughs> Uh, and then I call play to play it. Um, let's see. Okay, so no errors. Uh, oh, wait, sorry, sound. You've got to be kind of, you know, I, I forgot to ask them to, to hook me up, so just... Can everyone hear that? Great. Okay, that's Space Invaders. That's it. Uh, do we have time for questions? Uh, yeah, I think that we have time for one question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask about the frameworks. You told us that you don't use it right now. So is there any reason more why you don't use them? Sure, so um, the question was, uh, why don't I use frameworks? Um, to make my actual games, um, I actually do use frameworks. Um, before other ones, like the render engine, which is good, and uh, Impact, which you have to pay for, which is really good. Um, uh, but I wrote my own framework more recently called Coquette. Um, it's just like a little micro framework, just does the kind of basics for you. Um, so I, if I make an actual game, I totally use a framework. But I think what I, the point of this talk was to s kind of the framework kind of kept me away from the details of what I was doing because I was afraid of that it was too hard. But actually, it turned out it was super easy. And so the idea here was just to say, hey, look, it's actually pretty okay. So this is 170 lines, and I've got like, I mean, the world's shittiest looking game, definitely, but there's some basic stuff going on there, right? By the way, the code's on GitHub at uh, github.com slash cook slash space invaders if you want to look. Yep. All right, thank you very so much. Thanks. Thanks.